it true that when you're saved, you know that you know that you know? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. We struggle with our assurance. Uh, and conversely, there are some who don't struggle with their assurance. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got to bring that up, too. The, the, uh, one of the things we deal with all the time, people come to us, I think they trust us with this, it's sort of a confession, is, is living in terror, living in fear. And there's a constant concern that, that it, it, it's almost like there's, there's this thing inside that can never hear enough that Jesus is sufficient for them in any number of ways out of the text. Yep. Or even using apologetics yep. or any number of those things. And it's easy for us sinners to either snatch despair from the jaws of, of comfort or uh, sometimes to feel like I'm winning and you should be more like me. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not like them. That kind of nonsense. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, that's the, the, the winning side. But when it comes to being a Christian, should I be doing something like that, knowing that I know that I know? Is that should be should I find that in myself? Well, in First John, he he writes, and these things I write to you in order that you might know. And I've on this show I've said several times, it's an interesting study to take a look at the confessions of various Christian denominations. There's a great span of views of assure, what's called assurance. And you might discover a church that will feed me the scriptures that this is possible and it's encouraged and where to go in scripture to find it. That's a church worth attending. But there's a great discrepancy. I've told the story before when the microphones were off. I said to Dr. Horton, I said, do you hold that the gracious God day by day gives you just a slight view of your Christian improvement so that you can be assured? He said, heavens, no, that's Puritanism. I said, okay, how do you know? And he said, by my faith in Christ. Now, that's very different from what a Lutheran would answer. Lutheran would answer, I've been baptized in the name of the Trinity, and just this Sunday the pastor put into my mouth the very body and blood of Christ and said, this was for you. Rod. Uh-huh. This is for you by name. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a there's a span, and that, that's an interesting study. Just take a look at what the different churches confess with regard to the question of assurance. It, it ties directly to what do you believe? Yeah, and and I, it's a it's amazing even out of scripture when we get these, when we get these comforting words, and some part of our. Our mind, instead of going, I know that I know, yeah. instead goes, but are you sure? Yeah. Did he really? There are psyches that do that to individuals all the time. And it's a dreadful sort of situation. But the pastor is to use scripture to assure them why they can know. And I've modeled this about, I used a story some time back in, a, in an episode about a guy that I knew who was speaking to people about Christianity and helping them out of their sin in the, in the moment. And he clearly had been taught at his church that it wasn't sufficient. And he was telling me how he needed to do better. Oh. It was, it was a, it was a goal that sounded to me like he, it's, it was very obvious to me that he would never reach it. Sure. It was a mirage off in the distance. Sure. And you would never get there. <clears throat> yep. You would never reach the oasis. Yep. You always had to strive more and strive more and strive more. And it just, and I, and I felt Tragic. like, and I felt like, dude, yeah, you need to hear some good news. And I, and I told him, I said, you need to sit in the gospel and just absorb it like a jacuzzi. Yeah. It, this isn't on you. Right. Everything necessary to get you in was done one afternoon, late afternoon 
about a, a few hours' walk from the center of the city of Jerusalem. Everything already done. And it is the church's job to bring that confident saving message to you every week. That's right. the church's yeah. purpose for existence. <laughs> yep. Yep. The church is not a works factory. The church is primarily a gospel proclaiming. Or it should be. Or it should be. A gospel proclaiming. Where else would you hear the gospel than from a church? I mean, you're not going to hear it. I'll leave out uh, the... Well, well the, look, people we talk to, uh, how many times have we heard, I thought I'd heard the gospel. Yes. And I'm realizing now that I've never heard it before. Yep. Something like that. Yep. How many times? Yep. As part of our show prep, one of the things I'd set aside was for, out of 1 Timothy. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. Yet for this reason I found mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That from a murderer. And we just saw that meme. I just showed you the meme, and I've seen it before, so this isn't like it's you know brand new off the press. How Paul was received into heaven at the cheers of those whom he martyred by cutting their heads off. That his own victims cheered him into heaven. Yeah. That's how safe he was, and that's how good the news is. Yep. That even a guy like that could go in there. Yep. Even King David can make it in there. Yep. Hardly a... after after all his dark sin. Yeah. Murderers make it into heaven in faith in Christ. Yeah. And not a faith of their own. <clears throat> yep. Lest any man should boast. Yeah, a that's... faith that is given to them by the Holy Spirit. Yep. No credit. You don't achieve this faith. You don't arrive there. It's a presence that's that's given to you. Yep. But instead, we sometimes are back to the original question. We are tempted to believe, and sometimes those in leadership would teach that we should look inside. Huh. For, for assurance. We oh. should look for signs within ourselves oh. that effects of the new man are, 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 oh. are signs to us that we are, are Christians rather than the outside works of Christ. Right. And that his resurrection. Right. Is <clears throat> it's very common in a culture like ours to have a growing skepticism throughout the culture with regard to the scriptures themselves. And I again plug happily uh, the audio series Sensible Christianity by Dr. John Warwick Montgomery. We've got it available at 1517, and eventually I'm going to get notes that summarize every chapter in there. No, they're, no, I got it. They're, they're done. Remember? No, I got that. Okay. We All have right. it, and it's been downloaded. But anyway, got, that, got that. That, if you're wondering about the whole schmoodle, the whole New Testament, that series can be a turning point for you um, like no other sensible Christianity. So we here will say, if we're in to, to answer the question, should I, should I expect to know that I know that I know in my faith? The answer is no, you need to go and hear again this week right. from your pastor right. what old Adam so easily forgets. Mm -hmm. That is that Christ crucified, Christ was crucified for you by name. Yep. yep. For the sins you've committed this week, for your inherited sins and for the sins you've committed this week. Yep. And for the ones in the future. And do that. Until Be of the good cheer. Do that your whole life. Yep. Go hear it every week for your whole life. The pastor should be preaching that to you and not turning you back on yourself. 
That's law. Yep. If you despair from such a message, it's because it's despair worthy. Christ is our salvation. Christ is, is all. Christ is all in all. <laughs> yeah, many times <clears throat> when people grasp the, the essence of Christ saying just as he died, it is finished, <clears throat> that when they get that and it goes into the internals, a lot of the questions and fears vaporize. I think it's I think it's important to remember why or what it looks like that God speaks to speaks about us as sheep mm-hmm. as a flock. Mm-hmm. What is the nature of sheep? Is it the nature of sheep to be not fearful in the face of all the threats and and, and the things in the world that are <laughs> at our throat? Or is it our nature to bleat and be afraid and run away and be confused and run in circles and yep, freak out and scream and be just ridiculous? Yep. No matter how many times the shepherd's going, ah, I got this. And the sheep still runs around like that one where it dives in the hole, that one meme where the sheep (laughs) dives in the hole. We sheep are good at that. Yeah. When, When Jesus gets up there and says, do not be anxious. Yeah, oh. I'm like, oh, come on. That's oh. like telling a sheep not to bleat. Yeah. <clears throat> it's one of the hardest verses in New Testament for guys like me. I'm like, I don't, if I didn't need to be anxious in the same way, I wouldn't need to go to, to church every week <clears throat> yeah. to hear Christ crucified for my sins. Yeah. Because Consider the lilies. They neither sow nor spin. I'm not a lily. I've got a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> you don't seem to understand, Jesus. <laughs> I always loved that one. That always killed me. So what is the good news for us when we, if we are tempted to go inward and for, for assurance? It's going to fail you. The reformers, both Luther and Calvin, is hard for us to imagine in our day. Both Luther and Calvin saw the self as a problem, not an answer. When you consider all the self-help books in the bookstore shelves, <clears throat> the reformers thought that the self was a problem because it was from Adam. And we need to return to Jesus' word. Yep. In this case, we would go to the words of St. Paul, preaching Jesus to us. Yep. Because these, these words are true and sure that Jesus and his death and resurrection are sufficient to save me, even as I sin against him. Yep. I love that part. Even while I'm sinning against him, he saves me. Come to 1517.org for more. And we'll see you on social media. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.